Sometimes the creation becomes more famous than the creator. We've probably all heard songs on the radio that almost everyone universally knows, but many people know nothing about the band behind them, like Take On Me by AHA. In this video, we're going to look at the person behind arguably the most famous philosophical thought experiment, the trolley problem. That person is Philip Afoot, and we'll also look at the specific essay where the trolley problem emerged and how it relates to the issue of abortion. Foote was born as Philippa Ruth Boston Quay in October of 1920 in England. Fun fact, apparently her grandfather was US President Grover Cleveland. Now unlike the other forgotten philosophers we've covered, Foote didn't get any kind of education as a kid. But despite all odds, she was still able to get into Oxford where she could start learning philosophy. I don't know much about Oxford, but apparently there was this hall called Somerville, which acted as a women's college, and this place had some pretty heavy-hitting alumni. In the world of politics, we have Margaret Thatcher and Indira Gandhi, and in the world of philosophy, we have Iris Murdoch and Mary Midgley, who I have a video on. Foote thrived here, learning, teaching, eventually getting married, and writing her own stuff. In 1969, she left her job and life at Somerville to go to the US. There she continued to do academic work all over the country at different universities, until her death in 2010. So as you can see, her life isn't as flashy as some of the other people we've covered. It was mainly an academic life. However, I'm assuming this could be a result of being denied an education as a child. It makes sense to then go all out in academia once you get in, after being shut out from those opportunities earlier in life. With that said, let's take a look at Foote's most influential contribution to the culture of philosophy, the trolley problem. You'll find the trolley problem in her book Virtues and Vices and Other Essays in Moral Philosophy, specifically in the essay entitled The Problem of Abortion and the Doctrine of the Double Effect. Now although the essay is entitled The Problem of Abortion, Foote spends most of the essay actually talking about the second part of the title, The Doctrine of the Double Effect. The doctrine of the double effect is a moral doctrine that wants us to distinguish between effects that we intend and unavoidable but foreseeable effects. Here's how Foote describes it. The doctrine of the double effect is based on a distinction between what a man foresees as a result of his voluntary action and what, in the strict sense, he intends. Maybe an example will help explain this. We all love Popeyes, or at least we should. If you go to Popeyes, your intended effect is to get food. But by going to Popeyes for the food, there are some other things that result. You have to drive there, you have to spend money. These aren't desired, I mean no one likes spending money. But these are foreseeable effects of going to Popeyes. So we have our intended desired effect of going to Popeyes, which is getting some food. But we have these foreseeable effects that we may not want, but are foreseeable nonetheless. Mainly driving and spending money. The doctrine of the double effect simply says a distinction should be made here. A distinction between the intended and what is a foreseeable effect of our action. It really focuses on the mental state of the person acting. The words double effect refer to the two effects that an action may produce. The one aimed at, and the one foreseen but in no way desired. By the doctrine of the double effect, I mean the thesis that it is sometimes permissible to bring about by oblique intention what one may not directly intend. So now that we have a general understanding of this doctrine, let's now see it in some thought experiments, including the trolley problem. For starters though, let's start with Foote's judge problem. Say that you're a judge and you're overseeing a case where a man you know in your heart is 100% innocent, but he's on trial for murder. So if he's innocent and all the facts go to show that, then you should just find him not guilty, right? Unfortunately, there's a mob of people outside the courthouse claiming that if you don't find him guilty, they'll start rioting and murdering people. So as the judge, do you condemn this innocent man to death or do you let the mass murdering happen? The doctrine of the double effect would say even though we may find the man guilty, it's not because we intend to do so, but because we intend to prevent the mass murdering bloodshed that would occur outside. But something about that sounds wrong, right? Let's now finally take a look at the trolley problem to see why it's wrong. So we got the driver of a runaway tram where he could only steer from one narrow track onto another. Five men are working on one track and one man on the other. Anyone on the track he enters is bound to be killed. Now why are we intuitively more fine with the driver steering onto the track with one person as opposed to the judge condemning an innocent man? Well, Foote says this is because of another distinction between positive and negative duties. Okay, so what does that mean? A positive right corresponds to a positive duty, and is a right that he on whom the duty lies shall do some positive act on behalf of the person entitled. A negative right corresponds to a negative duty, and is a right that the person bound shall refrain from some act, which would operate to the prejudice of the person entitled. 
So that was a lot, but I'll do my best to explain it. If you're an employer, you need to pay your employees. This employee has a positive right to be paid. They're entitled to having you, the employer, act in a certain way. But also as an employer, you cannot physically assault your employees. Your employee has a right, a negative right, to have you refrain from assaulting him. They have a negative right to you not doing something. So if you are entitled to rights, a positive right says that someone is entitled to do something for you. Like the government's promise that you'll be defended by the military if a foreign invader shows up. And a negative right says that someone must refrain from doing something to you. Like the government's promise that they won't imprison you without due process. Most of the time. Foote believes that it's good to limit the amount of negative rights violated, but it's disputable to violate a negative right for the purposes of pursuing a positive right. So the judge would be violating the negative right of the innocent man by condemning him, even if he would be bringing about a positive right to the community in general. The judge is personally acting to violate a negative right. But in the case of the trolley driver, the cards have already been dealt. There's no way to avoid killing someone. So if the driver steers towards the one person, he'd be trying to minimize the amount of violations to negative rights. If the choice is between inflicting injury on one or many, there seems only one rational course of action. If the choice is between aid to some at the cost of injury to others and refusing to inflict the injury to bring about the aid, the whole matter is open to dispute. Foote believes it's wrong for us to be inflicting the injury, that we should adhere to others' negative right for us not to hurt them. In sum, for many moral dilemmas, we should refrain and not bring about injury ourselves, because to do that would violate negative rights. A much clearer example given by Foote is that there's a serial killer on the loose, and he says that if you don't kill one person, then he'll kill two people. Foote believes the right response is to not kill someone because you would be the one violating a negative right, even if it's in exchange for a positive right. Put simply, putting all these technical words aside, Foot is saying don't get your own hands dirty, even if it's for some benefit to others. The judge is getting his own hands dirty by condemning the innocent man. The trolley driver, however, is forced into that situation and needs to act, unlike the judge who can just recuse himself or run away. So that's the doctrine of the double effect and Foote's further distinction of positive and negative rights. Now how does she apply this to the issue of abortion? Well she first starts by dividing up three different abortion scenarios. One is where both the mom and the child's life are in jeopardy, but the mom's life can be saved by killing the child. This is like the trolley problem where someone is going to die regardless, so Foote believes it's best to minimize the harm done by killing the child. The next scenario involves either saving the mother and killing the child, or killing the mother and saving the child. Foote thinks it's fine to act either way here since it's certain that one will die. As to who the doctor should kill, well, Foote leaves that one open to debate. And the last but hardest scenario is where the child must be killed to save the mother. But the child would be born and saved if nothing is done and the mother dies. Well, Foote's response is that it's complicated. We're probably all in agreement that later in life, if the mere existence of the child, who was like four or something, somehow threatened the life of the mother, it would be wrong to kill that child after they've been born. So the debate really comes down to how we view that fetus, and if they should be given the same rights as that born child. So really, we've kind of gone back to one of the big root disagreements in the abortion debate. Foote doesn't really give her own perspective either. This might seem like a cop-out and maybe it is, but at least we've narrowed down different abortion scenarios using the distinction between positive and negative rights. I've not been arguing for or against these points of view, but only trying to discern some of the currents that are pulling us back and forth. But ultimately, this video is not about the abortion debate. If you want me to showcase different moral arguments from philosophers on that topic, let me know. So that's Philip of Foot and the infamous origins of the trolley problem. Well, I guess it's more like the tram problem, because that's the word she used. Share your thoughts below on the double effect and positive versus negative rights. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.